Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you once again for choosing Fading Memories. Today, I have Julian Guerrero with me, and we are talking on a communication tool for our older population. It's called Speak to Family, but I'm going to let her explain it better because you guys know I'm really super good at butchering names and details. So thanks for joining me, Jillian. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. So how did you come to design a communication tool? I'm assuming we have a loved one with memory loss or you work in the industry or even better, you might have both. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, a little bit. So it actually started with my co-founder, Matt. Um, He built the first prototype for his mom because um, we use an Amazon Alexa to to communicate back and forth with families, content, all this good stuff. Um, And he was at a place where his mom was the center of the universe. She was the one where everyone found out all the information. All he has four, he has three brothers um, and everyone would go to her to get what's going on with the fam. And texting came out, group chats came out, and she's blind in one eye, and it to her acuity was getting a little bit lower, so it was, she couldn't text. It was difficult to swipe on the screen and touch those buttons, which I'm sure that uh, you are well aware of. Um, yeah, so, I have a, I have weird vision, so yeah, the I'm always hitting the wrong keys. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 not. They're not made. Um, they're very tiny screens. They're not made to, for for much accessibility. Um, but he was working with, um, he was doing some consulting, he was working with um, uh, some smart technology, and he was using an Amazon Alexa and decided to build a way for his mom to get text messages through Alexa from his family. Um, and it worked out really well for her. If she could do it, anyone could do it. Um, she hates technology, which I'm sure I've, I've, I've run across this my past two years of how much older people hate technology. So she could do it. Anyone could do it. Um, and from there we partnered up and decided to, we can bring this to more people. Um, it's not just his mom. It could be for every other parent, um, in the U S. Definitely. It, it's, it's interesting because computers came out when I was in high school. So I'm mm-hmm. aging myself, but that's okay. I tell everybody how old I am anyway. <laughs> um, so it's like, I feel like I'm kind of in between the, oh my gosh, why can't we just have regular phone calls at that generation and the millennials who are like, Ugh, why are you calling me? Just send me a text. And I'm like, I like both. So, mm-hmm. and I'm your classic millennial. I'm a texter. I'm like, why, why, uh, panic when someone calls me. I'm like, who's calling me without texting me? You're going to call me first. Like, what is this nonsense? Like, oh my gosh, somebody must have died. Yeah. <laughs> it's just really interesting how in two generations, we've like literally flipped the script on how we prefer communication. (laughs) And of course, us Gen Xs are always in the middle going, hey, wait, what about us? (laughs) It's so true. And and you're making a really good point of everyone has their own comfortability with technology. Everyone has their own preference. So why are we going to force our Gen Zs to um, pick up the phone and call someone? They're not going to do it. They're on Snapchat and Instagram and TikTok. Um, why are we going to have someone like myself, you know, try to pick up a phone call? It'd be so much easier for me to record my voice and send a message. And we can't expect an older person who, you know, has Parkinson's or another type of acuity issue to be able to te- text back. Um, so with our app and software, uh, it's directly through voice and why uh, Amazon Alexa and Siri and all these other products, all voice assistants are so powerful um, for us right now. Is it ever going to work with Siri? <clears throat> Excuse me. Cause I'm a, I would love to, well, I like dictating text messages. Mm-hmm. My daughter will text me. She's 30. So she's definitely a solid millennial. <laughs> and she only calls when it's like, this is too complicated a situation. I have to like yeah. call the parents and explain <laughs> it to them <laughs> or, you know, mm-hmm. or it's a more sensitive discussion. But 90% of her communication with me is text. And that's fine because if I'm busy, I can respond later. It's like, but if I miss the phone call, then you kind of feel like, I missed the phone call. I got to call her back right away. 
So, I mean, I like texting, but I like being able to talk to my phone and say, you know, and I can't say it now because I don't want to, I use the phone for my web cameras. I don't want to wake her up. Um, But, you know, I'll say, hey, you know who? Text Laura. And then, and especially with CarPlay, Mm -hmm. I have, you know, I'm, I got really good at dictating text messages that don't, you know, they don't not run on sentences. They have punctuation so that when it reads it back to you, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I would love, you know, I think this is not just for the older, well, I guess I'm getting older, but not just for older people who are having some sort of cognitive challenge. Mm -hmm. At least I like to think I'm not having a cognitive challenge. (laughs) I don't think so either. (laughs) There are days, but (laughs) so is it, is it right now? It's just exclusively for Alexa. Yes. Uh, okay. We will look in other voice assistants, but it's time after time um, and to make sure that we have it down pat. It's so new. It's such new technology. And our goal really is to make sure that it's working. It's providing value. Um, we like It's a very mission-based company. So if we can change one person's life when we're at a community, it makes all the difference. It's like a thumbs up, like, yes. We did it. We got that person to make their phone call to their loved one. We got that caregiver uh, to send the announcement to let them know that they're going to be on their way to take them down to dinner very soon. That sounds wonderful. So how how does this all? Okay, we've kind of discussed how it works, but like, let's get into the nitty gritty of how it. What what pieces, parts besides Alexa do we need to make this work? And how how are you finding people are using it? with loved ones that live in, you know, a memory care or assisted living community? Sure. So um, we really focused on the care circle of, we call it a circle of trust. Um, A lot of, we found that uh, HTAC products are really focused just on the resident, just on the person aging. And there's so much more to that. There's all these caregivers and people part of their circle. You have the family, you have the friends, the grandkids, you have their OT, their PT. There's so many people involved. It's not just about the resident, it's about everyone. Um, so when we enter the situation, we know that um, a resident's going to be using the Alexa Interact, but it's just as important and maybe even a little bit more important to get the caregivers and staff involved. So typically we will um, come on to a community. We will have hundred Alexas with us and we do a workshop, we do training. So we do a fun workshop where we'll play a trivia game or we'll teach them how to make a phone call. And, you know, we'll call the front desk or we'll call, you know, the, the, the director there and they can see their face and it's funny. Um, so we try to make it super, uh, super like a warm environment. Uh, we want everyone to be comfortable with it and, if they're able to see us be silly and have humor with it, they're able to warm up a little bit more to the idea of this machine is going into my room. Um, but following that, it's also workshops with the staff. We put Alexa in the residence room, but we train staff. Uh, we have what's called an impact series um, where there are certain events where um, certain workshops where we focus on how can the staff make an impact with this? How can we make an impact on the staff? And it's teaching them, hey, did you know that you can send a message to uh, your resident to let them know um, that their family is on their way or the family is waiting downstairs for them um, to help alleviate some of those door-to-door knocks and to give people a little bit more information um, about who they're dealing with and what's going on. Well, that makes sense. And I would think it would save time there would be more touch points for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. And I would think that it would help maybe reduce some of the anxiety that some residents in memory care with Alzheimer's or other dementias feel because obviously their sense of time is not great. And if you Mm -hmm. say, Oh, your daughter's coming in an hour, that doesn't mean much. And so, and 10 minutes goes by and they're harassing you again. And you've got 15 other things to do. Like we know they're not, you know, overstaffed in those places. So anything that can, can allow them to do more without taking up more of their time. I'm assuming you just speak to it. Is that, mm-hmm. is that? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Making sure I'm not off on the wrong, <laughs> wrong no. path here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That would be, that would be really nice. So how does it work with family members? Mm-hmm. So I would do the same thing, send a message from my phone to mom's Alexa. 
Yeah. So we, we have a community, we have a family app. So in the family app, you can send a message, whether it's audio, video, text, um, you can view the menu, view activities, uh, make phone calls directly to their device. And I think one of the more, um, the more important features that we've, we've recently released is what we call our wellness checks, where um, every morning, um, either a uh, resident, someone aging at home, wherever they are, can say, Alexa, I'm checking in, or Alexa, get my day started, or even a caregiver, caregiver can do it, and it checks off in the app. And then you have that peace of mind or the security, the front desk has that peace of mind of, oh, mom checked in today. Mom's okay. Someone checked in for mom. She's doing all right. Um, and from there, you can get some patterns too, as it goes on. It's not just so, you know, it, it does give that instant gratification, but there's more to learn after, after you get some history with it. Like what time they wake up and mm -hmm. that kind of, you know, like when they're <laughs> like, I wake up, but then I'm, I read or pet the dog for a while and then I get up. So it would definitely give you more information on what they're doing without having to be intrusive, mm -hmm. so to speak, which is kind of nice because mm -hmm. it gives them a little more autonomy while you're still gathering necessary and useful information. So how does it, so are you just, how does it help you learn that stuff if you're not talking to the resident or your family member? So when the wellness checks goes in, it goes to the app. So it's basically whoever can see it, but it's more of the after of, of um, mom got up every day between nine and 10 AM for two weeks. But after that, she started getting up later. She didn't check in as much. So it's picking up those patterns and able to see it over a long time. So that's good information to have, to be able to track changes. So you can tell the medical mm -hmm. professionals, because it's like some of those changes can be really subtle until you, yeah get to a certain like certain port let's trying to figure out the right words here you get to a certain spot where mm -hmm. the changes are a lot more obvious and then or you look back and go yeah i should have realized that that was a sign because mm -hmm. my mom was slowing down and she had one fall an observed fall and it was everybody was kind of like what what happened you know because she was I'm very ambulatory she walked just fine with no aids and so this fall was really unusual and then and then it was like two and a two-ish months a little more than two months later she fell and broke her well she was that was a different type of fall but the original one it would have been nice to know that that was a sign sure so i hear you, you. Know. <laughs> and that I was am. that happened first thing the staff was doing their early morning like the the AM staff was checking on residents at, you know, six something in the morning and they go mm -hmm. in my mom's room and she's on the floor. So. Yeah. I've heard, know. I've heard stories like that. And they don't, you know, they don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Zero clues. You know, mom couldn't tell them. Nobody observed it. It wasn't like she had, you know, she was a trip, a fall hazard. So it was just, it would have been nice to know that that was a sign maybe. Mm -hmm. But she did fall and break her leg, but that was because she was fighting with the staff because she didn't want to take a shower. That <laughs> was totally on my mom. I always like to comment on that because other than it would be very nice if these communities and moms was just A+, plus, if these communities would invest more in training and somehow find a way to um, give people more time to deal with residents because when you pressed for time – you basically have to manhandle somebody into the shower instead of spending triple the amount of time to sweetly coerce them into the shower. Mm -hmm. And sure. that's one thing I hope to help the world change in the next 25 years. I'll be 80. So yeah, that'd be nice. Let's change that before I need one of these, please. <laughs> so what other kind of, what other, since we had our little planning chat, what other updates have you guys made to the app? So we have the uh, so, check-in and the health, what we mm -hmm. just discussed. Yes, we have, we do some other work with some motion sensors and smart technology, um, which is really cool. That adds a little bit more info for learning patterns and trends. Um, but the more exciting one I like is um, our, um, our attendance feature. 
um, which is really focused on, um, you know, encouraging and, and proactively asking people to attend events and monitoring it as well. Um, so people can uh, listen to and see what the transportation is like or what activities are going and they're able to sign up directly through Alexa. Um, Alexa will ask them, do you want to go to this event or do you want us to book a ride for you? Uh, so it's more in the assisted living space, um, but it definitely has helped, um, you know, stay a little bit organized. Staff is able to get some more information. And what we look, what we try to convey is that this product and software in general in, in the senior living industry shouldn't be taking away from staff time. It should be giving staff more time to do to spend with residents. It's not a replacement for care. It's an addition to help them give that more care to residents. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I know the community that my mom lived in, they did not allow nanny cams, which was a tiny mm -hmm. bit frustrating. I understood why. Now, my mom had a private room, and so I'm like, I'm paying you guys a lot of money, and I I didn't question it. Maybe I should have, but I only sort of wanted a nanny cam. It would have been nice the day my mom fell if somebody had known what, what happened. So, you know, <laughs> they might want to rethink that policy. But, you know, this is less – it it allows for privacy still, for sure. whereas in – you know, a nanny cam or ring ring cameras, because I know a lot of people use ring cameras in their homes to help monitor what's going on. Um, that this would be better in a in a community, especially if cameras are not allowed. You know, which yes. I'm sure that's probably pretty common. Yeah, we run into that a, a, quite a bit. And what's unique about these devices that we use? So since we're we work directly with Amazon, we we use uh, their platform, and it essentially anonymizes these devices. So it takes away all the personal information. So no credit cards, no phone number, none of that. So like the classic joke is, mom's not going to be getting in an Uber with these devices, or you're not going to be able to order paper towels from from them. So it adds a few layers of privacy and security where you can only make phone calls and receive phone calls from people that you've allowed, that you add to their address book. You can't buy anything. You can't expect, there's no going to be no predatory calls. It's such a major thing in this industry. And it's one of the things we're hyper aware of. Amazon is hyper aware of, and the goal is to not have that happen. So um, all these extra securities and privacy points have definitely helped with that component. Yeah, you definitely don't want any scammers calling people with, you know, there's lots For of car warranty. Yeah, or, or <laughs> um, there, I just saw a, a video on Instagram recently where somebody came to mom and dad's house and talked them into a walk in tub and it never gets used. And it's like, I'm sure that wasn't cheap. I'm like no. not in the market for a walk-in tub at the moment, <laughs> but I'm sure they're not cheap. And if you're not using mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter, you know, $500 for something you don't use is a waste of money. And I'm sure they cost way more than that. So then there's all kinds of elder financial abuse that people perpetuate, you know, just like the charities that ask for money. And you always hear about charities that, or, you know, you, you find out something's wrong with, your loved one because they're giving to every charity that ever mails them. And once you give money to one charity, then you get 15 more know. requests. It's like, <laughs> it's like the everlasting gobstopper of begging for money. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely beneficial. Plus nobody needs those to call. It's like no. my cell phone is always on announce only announce call or block callers that are not in my contact list or mm -hmm. it's worded nicer than that but essentially <laughs> if if you're not in my contact list you're going straight to voicemail and i don't have to do it so it's just nice because i don't get disturbed and i don't need to deal with like you can leave a message and if i know somebody's going to call me i either put them in my contacts i usually do put them in the contacts and take the that you know that security feature off just because sometimes it doesn't always work to mm -hmm. allow them in I, if i put in different number or something but I can also see mom and dad, you know, like repeatedly ordering toilet paper until yeah. until you're building a, a you know a Lincoln log house of toilet paper rolls. Yeah, and everyone's wondering why do we have twenty boxes from Amazon right now? <laughs> so it's funny that, that would yeah I could just see it in the or just the frustration of why are we why are all these boxes coming and they don't remember they ordered them. So I mean there could be that could be a whole you know like. 
a reboot of the Golden Girls, like 2022 version. But, <laughs> you know, it's like you, you don't want them to spend their money unnecessarily no. or, you know, become a hoarder. So yeah. how would somebody use this if their loved one is living at home still? Mm -hmm. What's the benefit for non-community use? So we have a, um, a separate portal for home use, and it's uh, very similar. It's about getting everyone who you, you interact with on one page, and it's a little bit more of the proactive side. So um, uh, someone aging in place can record their activity, so letting you know their care circle know that they took their morning walk, they took their medication, um, they can ask for a ride. So um, we all know it, when, being a caregiver, um, it can be quite difficult uh, to manage one person. Um, so, and it just, it's just very tough and it's tough to ask too. You're very vulnerable when you're asking someone to help you get groceries. It's a basic thing that you did your entire life, but now you need help with. Um, so it can, and it also can take a lot out of everyone you're interacting with. It can be really draining. So they can ask for help. They need a ride. They want to go to church and it'll be sent to everyone in their care circle. So if you have your neighbor down the street and he is going to, you know, the grocery store anyway, he'll say, yes, I can take you grocery, uh, grocery shopping as well. Um, so it's about inclusivity and connecting people um, on that front. That makes sense. That actually is really beneficial because nobody wants to make 15 phone calls to get a ride to the grocery store. Especially if you went to the grocery store yesterday, like this household, somebody in my household who shall remain nameless because it's not me, goes to the grocery store almost every day, which was supposed to stop when we moved, but it didn't. No. And so, you know, part of it is, I mean, we're, we're super organized, but then you discover, oh, I was going to make this and I miss it. Who was it? There was one ingredient he was missing from dinner last night. So he went to the grocery store at least twice yesterday <laughs> and he's going today. So, and we're very organized, <laughs> so, you know, I could just imagine if there was some disorganization as a typical, you know, not everybody is super organized like we are. And if you had a little bit of cognitive impairment, good Lord, you could be asking somebody to take you to the grocery store three times a day. And that's when people start ignoring those phone calls. So asking everybody at once mm -hmm. definitely relieves the pressure on everybody. And I can see the benefit of that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to make sure my husband doesn't harass people to take them to the grocery store three times a day. <laughs> so do you have any cool stories of people in communities that are use, using these? Because I'm sure you must have some fun stories to tell us because stories are always great. <laughs> they are. I have a few heartwarming ones. Um, and they, they, the impact that I'm saying them now, it does not, um, it really doesn't convey in the moment of seeing certain things happen. Um, we had one, I was out at um, one community in, um, in Nashville area. And this woman had an old giant flip phone. She was, she was basically blind and she had to call downstairs to the front desk every time she needed to make a phone call. Um, we put a device in her room. We put an Alexa in her room. We added her contacts. Um, and showed her how she and did a call with her to her to her daughter, and tears were up in her eyes. Like she was so happy, she was able to do it by herself. And her family ended up canceling that flip phone. She no longer has the flip phone, um, so she just uses her Alexa to make calls. And it's been it's such a relief. And it sounds so minor right now, but the impact it has on wellness and connectivity and the caregiving time, their staff. Um, and the family as well. It's just, a, it's much a big relief. I can actually relate because my paternal grandmother was mostly blind because of glaucoma. And she had one of those goofy flip phones and she would dictate to it, which as you know, she died at 103. So people that are familiar with much older adults like that, you know, the, as as they start entering the active dying phase or they're in the stages just before it, you know, like her voice got very, a lot softer and a lot harder to hear. And she was a developed hard of hearing this. So she would talk to the phone and it would say something back and she couldn't hear it. So I would mm -hmm. think with an Alexa, I'm assuming one, you could probably put headphones on it. 
Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. I started using a product that all you caregivers need to try. I started taking AG1 from Athletic Greens after my workouts because I needed a quick and healthy way to refuel my body. While there are lots of options, most don't taste great, and I don't eat or drink things that don't taste good. So what is AG1? Well, with one delicious, mildly tropical flavored scoop, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins and minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to fuel you for your crazy day ahead. AG1 helps support mental clarity throughout the day and you know how important brain health is to this gal. It has over 7,000 five-star reviews and costs less than $3 a day. And you know your time is worth more than three bucks. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover. I'm sure you're aware that there may be a connection between poor gut health and dementia, so this is another way to help protect your brain. As caregivers to someone with a cognitive impairment, this is also an excellent way to get much needed nutrition into someone who is slowly losing the ability to eat. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D, which is also important for brain health, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash emerging. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash emerging to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Now back to our conversation. Yes, you can connect to Bluetooth, um, but the speaker is fantastic. Yeah, um, I would, that's what I was thinking. It's like she would have benefited from that tremendously i don't know that my aunt would have because she probably would have been harassing my aunt but <laughs> my aunt is the one that did 90 percent of the caregiving for her mother-in-law so mm. that's why i say that but at least she would have had the the ease especially after she she started having some really minor strokes so the last nine months of her life she was in a board and care home and because she couldn't hear very well and she couldn't see worth a darn it, even the flip phone, as basic as it was, was was a challenge for her to use. And I'm sure, sure that made her feel more isolated. So, yeah. yeah. She would have benefited from speak to family. So <laughs> I can relate to that story just fine. But, mm -hmm. you know, so you had other heartwarming stories as well. Yeah, I have some funny ones, too. Um, there's just so, so many characters everywhere. And there's one person who um, he dyes his hair on a regular basis. First time I met him, it was purple. And now um, he tra he's tra he transitioned to a green color for St. Patty's Day. OK, um, but he's fantastic. And he he lives in the community with his wife and um, his wife um, has um, she's super hard of hearing. She has a bit more dementia. He's pretty he's pretty with it, um, but she gets nervous every time he leaves and she doesn't know what to do. So with the device, she can call him directly for it. We have a little 10 card in front of the device. So she says, Alexa, call John or his, his name. Um, and oops, John. Alexa, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, you can tell I forgot it, forgot to meet mine. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I've learned the hard way not to mention yeah. the, the S I R I word. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say it. No. <laughs> um, but she's now, she was able to, whenever he left, he would remind her, call me if you have any problems. And she would just yell, um, to call him and he'd be able to answer. Um, so it helped them stay connected. He would still be able to go do his thing, get his hair done, walk around, wear his fancy pants, and he would know that she's comforted and she has a way to connect if she needs. I could just hear, see, I don't have one of those in this house, so I could say the word, but I could just hear Alexa going, stop screaming at me. <laughs> oh, stop yelling yeah. at me. <laughs> we but at we least at least there, she's yelling at a device and not a human. Mm -hmm. uh, we always say, like, make her your new friend. Make her your assistant. Like, Lexa can be your assistant. So have reminders. Put alarms on. Do timers. You know, get your day going with her. And um, people adapt to it um, once they realize how much information they can put in. Like, birthday reminders. Birthdays are huge. 
Um, I believe that. Mm -hmm. So you find the um, acceptance, the technological acceptance of this device and, and the software that you guys have created is pretty high. Yeah. We you don't run in, you don't run into some super stubborn family members like mine. Oh, oh, absolutely. All the time. But it's like breaking down those walls and it's like some people it's not going to work and it is what it is. It's okay. Uh, but there's people that um, will say their family members are super hesitant or they're he really hesitant themselves. And we're like, just talk to us. Like we'll explain if you still don't want to try it after it's all okay. No one's going to force you. Um, but it's just like breaking down those walls and finding out why don't they. And it usually comes down to privacy. And once we articulate and show them that these devices are different than what they're used to, it becomes a little, they're warmed up to a little bit more. That's good to know. Cause it's, I can just see, you know, like my, my mom was pretty good at adopting to technology until about the time when she started having issues with the Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So hard to remember. So, I mean, it's so, so far back because <laughs> she had it for 20 years. It's, it, it's hard to remember the before time with that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, she, she started using Photoshop to edit photos um, wow. like I, I was basically on version three of Photoshop, which was like early nineties, <clears throat> just dated myself, but she was before me. So she must've been in like one of the That's first awesome. or second generation of Photoshop. And I don't even know what number we're on because they switched to a cloud based app model <laughs> many, many, like 10 or so years ago, mm -hmm. 10 or 12 years ago. Sounds about right caused a huge storm in the photography world, but we all adapted. It was fine. But it just, I, I wonder if some of the hesitation is also because they think it's hard to learn maybe. Oh, for sure. That's why we're, we really focus on training and workshops and there's so many things this can do. And we try to figure out what are the two or three, two or three immediate values that you can get out of it. And we teach them and there's this, there's this judgment that older people can't learn anything. Seniors can't learn anything. And it's so false. And sometimes it makes me so angry because people tell them that it's like, it's not true. You can't learn it. They can learn whatever they want. Yeah. Um, it's just like, give them the resources, give them the time, be patient with them. You know, it, learning something is not easy. That is true. I like to use things that are fairly intuitive because if mm -hmm. I have to fart around with if I have to spend a lot of time learning something it's generally going to shoot down to the lower lower priority levels just because yeah. time is you know time mm -hmm. is money and I have other things I'd rather do so you know but learning new things helps grow more neuroplasticity which is good because it keeps our brains healthy so mm -hmm. let's not write people off as unwilling to learn new things it's just we gotta gotta find the right encouragement so sure I wish the voice is so cool because you're just talking to it. You're just using your natural dialect as you always have been. Have you found that, because like I've run across people who swear that the Apple version, who <laughs> we cannot name its name because it's attached to my webcam right now, <laughs> doesn't understand them. Like, I think my daughter's getting better at this, but I've literally had people who think that the way they or their lack of enunciation or somehow that their, their particular dialect, the, the AI doesn't recognize it very well. I think it's just that we don't enunciate clearly enough for it to pick up what we're saying. Cause it's sometimes when I dictate a text message to my phone and then I look at it, it's like, I can see why you thought that's what I said, but that's not <laughs> what I said. <laughs> but I, I would assume with older people with softer voices and sometimes they get that little, like that little wavering in their voice. I don't know what causes that. Have you found mm -hmm. any of that to be an issue with, with the, um, the Alexas? Like I said, I don't have one of those, so I can say that <laughs> word. <laughs> um, we have, um, and it's always, uh, it goes back to some education and training and um, we always tell them, treat her like a child, talk to her like she's a kid. Don't be polite be really quick commands. Like you can tell her to shut up. You can be rude. She doesn't care. Um, so the training is really what sets it in. And she's really good at picking up accents and she learns as she's going on. So she'll get better at understanding you the more that you use her. 
That's good to know. I think I knew that, but needed a reminder. Again, don't have one of those. I just have to talk to. I refer to mine as uh, because mine has a male voice. My phone, mm -hmm. um, so it's it's Sir E instead of the actual oh. pronunciation of the name <laughs> of the AI on my phone. Uh -huh. And I actually try to be polite to mine, not because I'm overly like proper in that respect, but I read an article a couple years back that. Um, kids were not learning social graces like politeness and and properly asking yeah. people things because they were used to giving Alexa commands like, hey, do this, play this, I want to hear, you know, which is normal the way we speak to it. So no, having read that article, I'm like, when it says, um, like, I'll tell it, give me directions to wherever, and it'll say, on it. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm the only one in the car, but I'm faking the AI on my phone. <laughs> gotta do it anyway. Yeah, you know, gotta keep up the proper mm -hmm. proper social norms so that when I'm out with actual people I don't I don't blunder and say, yo, get me something to drink. <laughs> that would not uh that would not be a good post pandemic way to handle myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have not been in public in two years. Fetch me a drink. <laughs> need it now <laughs> yeah it's like uh i have not had iced tea in 20 minutes fetch me some tea it's like i don't that's all i drink is tea and water so you know i, I could just see somebody if i told somebody to get me a drink they'd be like what do you want it's like duh like don't you know already <laughs> yeah it's like it's programmed in my phone yeah for real <laughs> so do you have any stories of how people are using these well in a home setting mm-hmm um the home setting is really popular more with transportation and for messaging. So a lot of good use cases come from grandkids sending um, TikToks and sending videos. Um, they, yeah, you can share TikToks directly from our app to the show. So um, it works out really well for both. It's funny for us to think about it, um, but uh, grandkids uh, will often, uh, a lot of birthday videos we see come across birthday messages, singing, or updates on um, school graduations. A lot of those memories come across and able to share more directly instead of going through your parent to get to the grandparent. It really is grandparent to kid nowadays. Now that's, and that helps that bond, which is special. Mm -hmm. So not being an Alexa user, Although you're like starting to slowly convince me. Um, how does it play videos? Um, so that's when the, we have the Echo shows with the screens. Ah, so, got it. Yeah, they have the globe and then they have the big screens. And the screens add, a, it's it adds such a big, big difference. Um, being able to see visually a few things and to have that video call with your family or video message, <clears throat> it truly makes a difference. Well, and it's the, the echo screen is much bigger than your standard cell phone, mobile oh, phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for people who are, you know, well, like I need reading glasses. So I'd have to put my glasses on to see. I have to put on my glasses to look at videos on my phone. So it definitely would be better if I had a bigger screen. Like air, mm -hmm. what is it? Airplay it to my TV, which is yeah. 85 inches. <laughs> That's big enough. <laughs> But that would be cool because, you know, then you, it's definitely a better connection when you could see people. Mm -hmm. Like I just had a conversation with a, a upcoming guest and she's, um, she's a little bit younger than me, but we were talking about the difference between the boomer generation and the millennials. And then there's us Gen Xers in the middle as usual and how, how very different technology and sharing of information with Alzheimer's and other things like that. How very, very, they're like opposite. It's crazy. And those of us in the middle are like, well, I can see both sides, but you know, she was saying how she prefers zoom phone calls because she likes the face to face connection. And it kind of made me laugh because I've had to find a new web developer. And I basically spent four hours on the phone yesterday with my AirPods in so I could hear best. And, but it was not like this one guy sent a Google, like Google meet thing. 
he put it on his calendar. It's Google sent me this thing. And I'm like, hello, I'm waiting for you to log in. And he's like, oh, I thought you were going to call me. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is insane. And I'm like, I would prefer a regular phone call because I don't need to see you to. I was taking notes as people were talking to me. So it's <laughs> like, I didn't want a Zoom call, but sometimes it's nice to have that option. So having the face to face sharing of videos or, you know, especially because families are not always in the same geographic location or exactly grandkids can't drive over to see grandma and grandpa or, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure most parents aren't super thrilled with the idea of younger, younger family members jumping in an Uber or on a bus. So yeah. my daughter's 30, so I don't, I don't worry about her. <laughs> <laughs> She's on her own, <laughs> but is there other, other uses people are finding that are beneficial to um, older adults aging in place? at home um yeah it's really the wellness um able to they're by recording and tracking and saying that um or monitoring like motion sensors of how many times is mom getting up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night why is she getting up to go to the bathroom she didn't do that before maybe something's going on there uh, so having everything in one place and getting a little bit more into getting some smart home technology in there nothing crazy you don't need a washer that you can talk to turn on oh, <laughs> but you can use a light bulb as a fall, fall protection you can say turn on the light or turn off the lamp in the middle of the night and um really just to bridge some of those gaps of why did she fall down why was she on the ground it's like oh because she was trying to reach the lamp and the, cl the clicker for the lamp fell on the other side so she had to get down and she couldn't find her walker so that's how she did it on the floor yeah, that would be useful. That would have been helpful to know when my mom fell December 30th, 2019. But, and then I would assume that if you have a loved one who doesn't necessarily have cognitive impairment, they're not going to want you sticking cameras all over the place in their house. So motion sensors sounds like a, a, a better alternative oh. to not oh. having any of that information. That's mm -hmm. interesting. It's, a, it just, Kind of fascinates me how technology has totally taken over our life, sometimes for the better, sometimes for not. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. It's all about that balance of not being too, too intrusive, but also trying to connect the dots um, and making sure that we're not taking advantage of anyone. No one's being taken advantage of. Privacy is so important nowadays. So it's like, what is what are most people comfortable with? And you work around that. No, that makes perfectly good sense. So where... Can people find, speak to family and get this all set up? If, if like my mom was in a community that hadn't adopted it, would I be able to get it for her there? I mean, obviously my mom's gone, so that's not, it's not, I'm not looking for that, but I'm just asking the question, mm -hmm. does it have to be community acceptance if they're living in memory care or assisted living? It does not. Uh, people can go directly onto our website, speaktofamily.com, the number two. Um, and they can sign up there and learn more. We have a ton of resources on, you know, smart home products, on Alexa products, on caregiving content. We have user guides. Um, so we really believe in supporting everyone, no matter where they are, if they're even using our software, our information's there to help. Well, I will make sure that your website is linked on my Soon to be new website <laughs> on the oh, resources yeah. <laughs> page. Yay for me. <laughs> but no, I have an extensive resources page and I will put you guys there and probably on the partners page as well so that people can go there and, you know, even if they're like, oh, my mom's never going to use this, they can at least find the other, you know, mm -hmm. home safety tips and advice that you guys have to offer because, you know, it's amazing. Houses are not designed for people to age in. We all say we want to want to die in our home. It's like what my parents said. And that's really, you're going to have to do a lot of adaptation, adaptation. There we go. To make your place yeah. safe. Like 90% of my house is on the ground level. Mm -hmm. or, they don't have basements. They don't do those in California, but it's a, it's built on a slope. So you go mm -hmm. downstairs to my office in the guest room in a full bath. And if something happens where I can't navigate the stairs, then the two bedrooms downstairs in the bathroom will become useless. And we did try to find a single story house up here, but 
they don't build very many of those either. So, you know, it's huh. also one of my messages to people is please don't assume that you can stay in your home forever because it's not necessarily safe or wise because <laughs> you can become very isolated, which your your tool helps prevent that. So you should definitely check into that so that, you know, you could stay in your home safer and longer. And this was this was really fascinating. I like all the stories because I miss going to mom's community and and dealing with the residents there because many of them were just they were just funny. They are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my mom was a Diane and she befriended two other Diane. So that was confusing <laughs> as hell. We had Diane, other Diane and other other Diane is how we referred to them. But one of them was the worst chocolate feed. I thought I was bad, but. That gal, I made my mom a super dark chocolate cake for her birthday one year. Mm -hmm. And I went to take the dish to, because the staff was going to wash it for me. And I didn't think that that was necessary for them to take their time to do that. So I'm trying to take the dish and she literally jerked it out of my hand because she was licking the cake so crumbs out of the dish. And I was like, okay, I'll let you lick the dish. Like I let the dog lick the dish. So it's fine too. You know, not the same dish, but you know, it's like, there's a lot of, life and laughter and mm -hmm. unique stories when you know with people in communities so don't shy away from them they're not they're not the horrible places that they no, used to be scary. in the old days yeah no they can be and... they can be you know they can be a little bit harsh like memory care can be a little bit hard because mm -hmm. the the third diane the other other diane well no the second diane became really super paranoid and um, then her daughters moved her out and then the other, the other, other Diane, she always told me every week when I'd go visit my mom, she'd be like, you look familiar. And I'd be like, oh, well, I'm her daughter. And she's like, no, no, that's not it. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, I wouldn't know. <laughs> and then sometimes I'd remember that my mom thought I was her best friend and I'd be like, yeah, I'm her really good friend. And she'd be like, yeah, no, that's not it. And I'm like, whatever. I don't know who the hell you think I am. <laughs> But she Can't just, it, yeah, I was like, whatever. I, the reason I look familiar is because you see me all the time, honey. And we do things together. <laughs> I took her and my mom out a couple times. Just, it was almost easier to deal with two of them than it was just my mom. So that was always interesting. But yeah, she just, she progressed kind of a lot faster than my mom. And she just ended up roaming around, like not recognizing anything or anybody. It was just, that was hard. But, mm -hmm. you know, it was also... I also was afraid that was how my mom would end up. So it was like, you know, and it's tough. yeah, memory care can be kind of harsh, but that, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of hysterical things that go on. If you just kind of let go of social norms and, and laugh about the insane things that go on, like the gal that was running around in a shirt, and nothing else. <laughs> she ran past me. And I was like, Oh my. <laughs> And you just laugh because, you know, what, what am I going to do? I'm not going to run down the hall. And, humor in it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to tackle her and try to shove her into some pants because that's elder <laughs> abuse. But plus I, she was feisty. She probably would have won. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, this is terrific. And I'm excited that people like you guys are creating products that make it easier to stay in connection with you know, our loved ones in assisted living or living alone at home, like my grandmother did, even though she probably shouldn't have, or mom in memory care. I don't know how well my mom could have used it because she was there because she, we moved her in out, you know, she was pretty far along in the Alzheimer's, but you know, it would have been worth a try. My sister would have tried for sure. I probably would have been like, eh, well, okay, we'll give it a shot. Mm -hmm. I would have been more skeptical just because of mom's ability, but you never know. She might have bugged yeah. us with phone calls every time, all day. <laughs> okay, so the Speak To Family website is also linked in the episode notes, so you guys can just hit that hot link and go right to their website. You don't even have to go to my website. And I appreciate Jillian coming on and telling us all about this fantastic software and product, and I hope you guys find it useful. So thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks again. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.